in the United States is about 3.3 million people. And by the way, if you look at this, this is the most important thing. It's the fastest growing religion in the world. It's, it's really important that there are more Christians in the world, but Muslims will overtake Christians in numbers unless, I don't know, I guess Jesus comes again or I don't know, what it, something could happen, I suppose, to upset that. But sociologically speaking, trust me, it's Muslims will become more numerous than Christians at some point. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haqq diuzinahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahida. Asyadu an la ilahi lallahu wahdahu la syarika lah. Wa asyadu anna muhammad dan abdu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'dah. Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Techno. Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu. Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan sebuah video dari seorang dosen sosiolog yang bernama Sam. Menjelaskan tentang perkembangan Islam yang menurut survei merupakan sebuah agama dengan perkembangan paling cepat di dunia. Dan tidak mustahil akan menyalip jumlah masyarakat Kristen di seluruh dunia. Nah sahabat bagaimana video selengkapnya kita saksikan saja dan saya akan sedikit mereaksinya. This is why this matters. Muslims are 1.6 billion people approximately in the world. And 23% of the world's population. So it matters. You, you would, you, we, I want you to understand something about Islam in very, for those who don't, in a very practical sense. Just like when I go to Muslim countries, my, a message there is you need to understand Christians. So I happen to be here in a, in a majority Christian country, and so we're going to flip it a little bit. But understand, when I go somewhere else, it's the opposite, right? You know, it's, you, you need to understand Christian culture. You need to understand Christians. I talk about Christianity. I talk about some of the, the ways of being, uh, the ways Christians are. So in the United States, it's about 3.3 million people. And by the way, if you look at this, This is the most important thing. It's the fastest growing religion in the world. So at 73%, it's really, it's really growing much faster than Christianity and Hinduism and Judaism and various. So it's, it's really important that there are more Christians in the world, but Muslims will overtake Christians in numbers unless, I don't know, I guess Jesus comes again or... I don't know, what it, something could happen, I suppose, to upset that. But sociologically speaking, trust me, it's Muslims will become more numerous than Christians at some point in the not too distant future if we survive. Okay, uh, 98%. So, Bassem and I spoke in Baisai 3 the other day. And you said, I asked you a question. I didn't know what your answer was going to be. And I said, listen, just on a whim, if the, a the average Iraqi... Or the average Muslim, I think I said the average Muslim, Muslim as far as yeah. you know, but I mean, you, you, know, you, you know much about many Muslim communities. I said, take the average Muslim, who you know well. If they had experienced what you experienced, targeting of your house, killing of your wife, your daughter, your brother, and your nephew, and destroying your life, how many of them would seek revenge. How many would want revenge? And, you, and, you, and I, said, how, I said, how many would respond more like you and, not, not, and just want peace? What I said was, how many would just want peace? They just want to stop the violence, stop the war, stop the bloodshed, just please stop killing. And you said 98%. Yes, I, I'm talking about the average, not fanatic Muslim, average person like me who wants to live in peace. He wants to go on his own everyday living, sick of war, sick of car bombs, sick of assassinations. The majority of regular Muslims and Arabs, they, they just want to live in peace. And so then I asked you, I said, hey, can we go back to that? I said, what about the other 2%? And we talked about, well, wanting revenge or wanting to lash out is not actually lashing out. So of the other 2%, 
I said, does that, does, does that mean they actually, they would in, uh, lash out? And you said, no, they still wouldn't lash out. They would just feel like they want to. Yeah, they, they just want to be in peace. That's why I want you to understand, we, everybody wants to live in peace. But we're not let alone, that's it. So, so in that sense, really, this is what I think is important, my friend. You're, in a certain sense, you're not that special. You are, I mean, you're amazing, but in a certain sense, from this perspective, what you're telling us is... Arabs are not violent people. Yeah. Arabs are loving Muslims and Arabs are loving peace. They want to be in peace with everybody. You know, I don't know if you... And again, not every Arab. There are people, there, must be, yeah. there are extremists. But the point is, we, we, you don't live... Just like there are extremist Christians. We talked about that last weekend. You watched the lecture. Um, you know, I, we did a... Uh, I don't know if you've, we've ever talked about this, but there, the Pew, Pew Research did a poll on views toward violence, toward civilians. And they asked... They pulled people around the world. They pulled some 38,000 people in, I think, 80 different, no, 38 Muslim countries and then 80 different countries. It was all out. And they, were, they asked like, their views about extremism. When is it okay or is it okay to use violence, for a military to use violence on innocent civilians? And Muslims, especially Muslims in the United States, were far more likely than Christians, Jews, and other groups to say, no, it's never okay to use violence against civilians. And, and I, that doesn't mean that the, the, there aren't people who don't, but what it means is just as a general rule, when I hear people talking about Islam as a violent religion, and I think all of the indicators show that it's actually less violent in philosophy and so on, we happen to be at a period of history when there are groups of Muslims who are acting in very violent ways. Exactly. Yeah, the, the people who are acting in a violent way, they are acting out of hopelessness and they feel that they have been dehumanized, their rights have been taken away from them, and that's why they are acting this way. So if you leave them, leave them alone, be in peace, you will see no violence from Arabs or Muslims. Hmm. It, that's, I just want to stay, we, this is where we want to stay as we move forward in today's class. Let me show you the next slide. Um, this is just in the United States. They're asking people, the Pew Research Poll did a nice, this is 2011, but not much has changed because I saw some recent numbers that seem very similar. Do you identify first as an American or as a Muslim slash Christian? And Muslims, the number who identified as their religion first, it's like 49% versus 44%. Okay, these are Americans. But Evangelical Christians, look, they're at 70%. So this is off a little bit because of it's 32 and 70. It goes to 102, but that's because the numbers are probably uh, 69 and a half and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, and then look at Christians on average. So it's like, you know, very similar, right? Very similar. Okay, next slide. I just want to show you a few things. Uh, this is in the United States. Uh, my religion is the only way to eternal life. They're very basically kind of the same, you know, 35%. We believe 30%. In the same thing. What's that? We believe in the same thing. Yeah, it's the same God. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the same, same everything. Yeah. yeah, I know. Dudes, seriously, I know, I know Muslims and Christians, you probably are going to, they're going to, have a problem with this, but I'm a soci I'm an, as an agnostic sociologist, when I look at the Quran and I look at the Bible, the New Testament, it's the same book. You know what I mean? I mean, honestly, from a sociological perspective, it's the same book, but you know, whatever, we can argue specifics, but honest uh, to God, I don't. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna, I wanna talk about something. So uh, years, a few years back, I was in Istanbul, and this is the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. And I stayed in a hotel right across from the Blue Mosque. And Basim, you were in Istanbul last yeah, year. Yeah, I was in right? Istanbul, uh, I think October last year. This yeah. is a beautiful mosque. It's unbelievable. And I stayed in a hotel, and outside my window, I could see this, right? And, you know, imagine the call of prayer coming from the Blue Mosque. Yes, yes. I, it, I'm just constantly being drawn outside. It's the most beautiful, it's one of the, really the most beautiful structures I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, Sam, in fact, I have a recording of the prayer coming from that mosque. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. 
I think I have it. Let me look for it. Seriously? Seriously. Oh, my God. Okay, you look for that while I tell my story. Me, yeah, so, story next slide. Uh, so, this is what it's like when the mosque, when it's full on the inside. It's a massive structure, beautiful structure. And see how people are lined up in this way, okay? So, I, go to the next slide. When I went into the, to the mosque in the middle of the day, I just, I kind of wandered in as I do, you know. And I took my shoes off and I went out into the, and walked around to look at it. And at some point in time, I was drawn to sit down in a meditative posture. And I sat down against one of the pillars um, right over here, one of these pillars over here. In any case, um, so I sat down in sort of a, a zazen position because, you know, when I, sometimes when I'm praying, I, I, I will often pray in more of like sort of a Buddhist posture, right? Because I'm fine. I, I pray. It doesn't matter if I'm in a, a Buddhist or a Hindu temple or a synagogue or a mosque. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same to me. But I was sitting there kind of praying like this, just in, you know, in my hands and some, maybe some kind of mudra or something. I don't know what I was doing. But really going into this beautiful space and not knowing because I sort of lost pulled myself out of my mind a little, not realizing that people were starting to line up. So you think back to that other, that other uh, photo of people lining up, right? And, and so as I'm sitting there, I suddenly, op I feel something and I open my eyes and there's a couple guys calling me up because you got to fill in the spaces, right? I don't know. Why do you fill? You, you have to fill in spaces, right? Well, yeah, yeah. You have you when you stand, you have to stand next to each other, so so you have space for more people. Masya Allah, sebuah video yang cukup inspiratif dari sebuah kuliah umum. Seorang dosen sosiolog yang bernama Sam menjelaskan pada mahasiswanya tentang Islam dan perkembangannya saat ini di dunia. Saat ini jumlah muslim di seluruh dunia adalah 1,6 miliar orang yang merupakan 23% dari populasi umat manusia di dunia. Anda harus mengetahui budaya masyarakat sekitar di mana Anda berada ujarnya. Sebagai seorang Kristen yang akan mengunjungi atau tinggal di negara muslim, Anda harus mengetahui budayanya. Demikian pula sebaliknya, sebagai seorang muslim menurutnya sebaiknya mengetahui adat dan budaya masyarakat Kristen di mana ia tinggali seperti di Amerika. Di Amerika Serikat sendiri jumlah populasi muslim adalah 3,3 juta orang. Dan ini penting dan perlu dicatat. Islam adalah agama dengan pertumbuhan tercepat di dunia. Jadi sisa 73% dari masyarakat non-muslim di seluruh dunia yang menjadi seorang mu'alaf merupakan yang terbanyak dan tercepat di seluruh dunia mengalahkan dari agama Kristen, Hindu, Yahudi, dan sebagainya. Jadi penting untuk Anda tahu lebih banyak orang Kristen di dunia saat ini dibandingkan orang Muslim. Tetapi Muslim akan menyalip agama Kristen dalam jumlah ujarnya. Kecuali mungkin jika Yesus datang kembali kedua kalinya di dunia saya tidak tahu apakah angka itu bisa berubah. Tetapi secara sosiologis menurut saya percayalah. Muslim akan menjadi lebih banyak dari Kristen di beberapa tempat di masa datang. Dalam sesi ini juga disinggung tentang sikap ekstremisme di dalam agama Islam atau juga di kalangan orang Arab. Beliau juga pernah membahas ekstremisme di agama Kristen dalam episode sebelumnya. Nah sahabat mungkin itu saja sedikit reaksi video dari saya. Tentang dakwah dari dokter Sabil Ahmad ini mudah-mudahan bermanfaat. Wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.